It's that time again. Yes, welcome to Splatterlots. We invite 12 brave young warriors to go head to head with the dastardly and downright devious defenders as they compete to capture the highly coveted Splatterlot crown. Will the attackers take over the kingdom and reign victorious? Or will the defenders succeed in protecting their castle? Who will tumble? Who will tilt? Who will teeter? And who will go splat? Hello, I'm Dick. I'm Dom. I'm Tinkle. And welcome to the modern-day medieval world that is Splatterlot. You say that? Yes, I do say that. In fact, I just did say that. But what date would you say uh, modern-day medieval was exactly? Exactly? Exactly. Sunday, the 25th of June, 1973. No, 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 no. I said exactly. Just before tea time. Thank you. OK, so that's the date sorted. Now, what about Splatterlot itself? Can it be summed up in one word? Mm, difficult. Yes, I like it. No, 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 I haven't started yet. I mean, it's difficult to sum it up in one word. Oh. However, with Tinkle's help, mm. I can sum it up in one sound. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it might just be easier to show you Splatterlot in slightly more detail. Yes. Yes, it might. The six fastest attackers to cross the moat will be given the chance to escape the stockade. Only four will succeed and make it into the final. Yes, yes, I uh, definitely prefer the explanation. <laughs> but I still think... <laughs> ..sums up the show equally well. But if you prefer, we can look at round one in even more detail. The pungent plank kicks off today's moat challenge, then it's up the slippery slope, along the rolling mace and down the impossible incline. The beastly battle axes are next, followed by the rope bridge of disaster, and the debilitating disc completes the course. Yes, I'm uh, definitely preferring the explanation. <laughs> I know what you mean, but there's just something about <laughs> that you can't put into words. Thank you, Tinkor. Now scuttle off so I can introduce you and the other defenders. Are you all right? Shut up! Yes, they literally broke the mould when they made him. Tinker. Next, our foul-feathered friend... Kookaburra! <laughs> and finally... Police! They have one simple goal, and that goal is to... Defend the castle. <laughs> ah, yes, well done, Kook. You summed it up perfectly. Obviously not as perfect as... Stop! I'll save you the bother. <laughs> Lovely. Right, let's start round one. Tinkor has the vaporizer. Kook is acting very strangely at the water drop. And Belista is doing her nails. Here's Lucas. Dom, you're a veggie. What kind of power is he talking about? Oh, I'm not really sure, but it seems to be working. He's making the punch and plank look easy. Lucas, I don't think me and you can get along, because you're a vegetarian and I'm a huntress. That's nice. Uh-oh. <laughs> you missed, Shag. Oh, 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 Fogwart! There it is, folks. Our first splat of the day. Well, we've seen it so many times before. Lucas answered back and paid for it with a Fogwart in the builder's brew. But like a rubber ball, he comes bouncing back for Nutty Fudgekins. Not so much rubber ball, more like football. Look, if we freeze it here, Nutty Fudgekins and back of the net. Come on, Lucas. How bad do you want the crown? I want it! Now, what's Tinker up to? Well, it's difficult to say. His world is very different to ours. Lucas now struggling on the second axe. Tinkor really isn't helping there. Ooh, raving chutney ferret! Splats don't get any bigger than that. Lucas falls from the highest point and splats the other axe before landing in the moat. Good lad. Can I add some water? <laughs> well, so far the defenders have made Lucas's life very tricky indeed. <laughs> I am not a chicken. I'm a kookaburra. He's right. This is a chicken. And this is kookaburra. Quite different. Back with Lucas now at the debilitating disc. This is never easy, but it's a well-balanced start. And, oh, no, into the garbage water. Somehow, Lucas manages a backflip, and he lands head first into the gizoid. He makes it home in a time of 6 minutes 20. Nice celebration taunting Coop with his funky chicken dance. <laughs> you can't stay away! Yes, Nicole, but can you stay away from Ballista Splat Zuka? Nicole? Really? Really? For a war crime? Ballista's not impressed, and... Wallopy-doo! Oh, those paintballs can't stay away from Nicole, and neither can the spikes. Here, 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 and into the bling wad. On to the battle axes, and Tinkor's remembered to use his vaporizer this time. Oh! And the axes provide their second big splat of the day. Coot can't even look! But she's made it over. No, she hasn't. Mud Muncher! Well, it was an up-and-down round, but Nicole finishes in six minutes. Oh, oh, girl. Ooh, looks like Coot can't cope with her victory dance, oh. though. Oh, my eyes are stinging. Oh, my gosh. Right, time for our next attacker, I think. Here's Shania. Oh. We're on Dinosaur! Come on, Shania, let's play. 
place could end in tears. Shania! Sha, sha, Shania! Sha, sha, she's flat. Well, purple dinosaur loving Shania is at the mace. Can she cross it? Flobsburg! I think she was distracted by something in the moat. I think you're right. But it didn't stop her completing the course in 6 minutes 32. She seems very happy with that. And so's Tinkle. I love this wetsuit! Well, you can't have it. It's rented. Hi. Oh, Belize is getting friendly. Now she's getting all fiery. This can't end well. Now she's getting really fiery. But she's missed. Oh. Clinge muffler. And the lesson is, if the defender doesn't splat you, the course will. What's that? One of Tinkle's moat mates. <laughs> Here's Mitchell on the incline. Here he goes. Oh, <laughs> belly slap it. A classic case of the left foot not knowing what the right foot was doing. And Mitchell takes another trip to the moat. He's really testing that wetsuit. And really testing the other attackers, because that is the fastest time so far. Can it be beaten by our next attacker, Benito? This is... Oh, well, you can't beat that. Hi, Benito. In for this. Oh. <laughs> Belista's warm welcome is cold comfort for Benito after that in Vanessa. <laughs> so can he recover? Oh. Uh, oh, Widget. No, he can't. I think he was distracted again. Look, we really need to drain that moat. All right, Burrito. Did he say burrito? He just meant Benito. He did say burrito. But his name's Benito. Benito's burrito. Benito's Benito. Let's, Let's call the whole thing flat. And Benito Burrito finishes in 4.49. Oh, it's disgraceful. Here's Anna. Oh, I love fluffing my dog. Ruff! Who's flat? And that's a pretty impressive start from Anna. Not white and fluffy, just pretty roughy. And uh, walking the plank, the pungent plank, that is. But she's heading downstairs. What? Look. Oh, yeah, very good. Here she is at the battle axes. And Tinkle lets one go. Lovely. Oh, she's wobbling. Oh, and Fettuccine Primavera. Was that all down to Tinkle? No, it wasn't. If you look at it again, you'll see Belisa's has got her with a sneaky back splat. That was one splat too far for Anna. She's OK, but decides to stop there. She does not finish the course. So, halfway through, Benito Burrito leads with 4.49. And Shusha -sh 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 Shania is in the danger zone with 6.32. But no one's really safe yet, because with six more attackers to come, we just don't know who's going to go through, OK? We just don't know! Easy, easy! But I can see why you're getting so excited and agitated this round, and ultimately the crown are still up for grabs. OK, here's a quiz to see if you were really listening in the first half. Put this blindfold on and stand on one leg. Why? It's the rules. Right. OK, who loves his wetsuit? Uh, Mitchell. What did Lucas call Kookaburra? Uh, chicken man. Who can't stay away? You can't stay away! Yes, but who said it? Uh, Nicole. Who loves purple dinosaurs? Uh, give us a clue. Shh, shh. Give us a clue. That is the clue. Uh, mm, Shania. And finally, what is this Mexican snack? Sniff it and lick it. Benito. Burrito! Brilliant! Here's a reminder of what happened in the first half. Uh, uh, uh. So, uh, is that it then? We finish? Dick? Now, the first half attackers aren't the fastest ever, but they're all pretty evenly matched, which suggests the course is proving quite tricky today. Hello? Anybody? So, can the remaining attackers get round any quicker? Well, these are the times they're going to have to beat. Ah! So, let's get back to the course. Ow! I know just how you feel, Julian. Well, he howls like a wolf and runs like a fox. Someone get this guy some bubble bath. Hey, Julian. Uh-oh, here's Ballista. What a down! Ballista continues where she left off. But he's at the mace. He's sprinting. Oh, no, and now he's splatting. This might be why we haven't had any really fast times yet. The mace has stopped everyone so far. Now he needs to be careful on the incline because speed... Oh! Never works. Yes, speed demon Julian just needs to occasionally take his foot off the accelerator. But he still makes it over in the fastest time today. Well done, Howling Wolf. Here's our next attacker, Katrina, who also didn't cross the mace. Let's do it up! What's going on, chicken man? Oh, I mean Coop. I had a, uh, I had a cat called Katrina once. You did? Uh, yeah, she couldn't swim either. <laughs> Ooh, bit harsh. Uh, bum, 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 spam cakes. So Coop's taunting and the incline's daunting. What a combination. So what will Katrina make of the debilitating disc? And what will the disc make of her? Turn this up, T. Coop wants more water pressure. Thank you. Tink delivers and... Boosh! So does Katrina. Up goes the water pressure and down goes Katrina. It's the second backflip of the day. Katrina finishes with an impressive 5.43. Yeah, you know. We're chemistry. Woo! Even Kook's impressed. Let's get wet! Sounds like Taylor knows what's coming. Taylor, there's no way you're going to make it across this maze wheel. 
My buddy Tinkor over here, he made it. No way you're gonna get across. Belise is right. No one has made it across today. Humpty Dumper, and neither has Taylor. She's in the moat. She doesn't seem to mind, though. She gives the mace a big, wet hug before splatting in the love lav. Now, will she give the incline a big hug? Ooh, Gherkin Nora! This has it all. Taylor loses her grip, Tinkor emits the perfect cloud, and she disappears into another world before getting totally Gherkin. And Taylor finishes in a healthy time of 5 minutes 27, which will be good enough to see her through. Here's Stefan! I'm hungry! Well, that's nice. Are you thirsty? Want to know what I do when I'm hungry? I hunt! Splat! <laughs> Splat indeed, and Stefan's down! In fact, he's now sliding all the way back down into the chamomile lotion. It's like Belista's turned Splatlot into a giant game of snakes and ladders. But he's made it to the debilitating disc. What will Coop throw at him? That water pressure's building again. Yes, it looks like he's on maximum. Dangly didgeridoos! And Stefan finishes in 5.29, which is good enough to qualify. And the Queen of this castle! No, Audrey, not yet, you're not. The luck of the bad luck! Uh-oh, Tinker's getting a bit overexcited. He'll need a nap after this. He steps onto the axe, but Tinker isn't letting up. It's like he's frozen her to the spot. This is against the clock, Audrey. Not often you see Kook lost for words. Maybe she's decided to become Queen of the Battle Axes instead. Uh, come on, Audrey! Yeah, she really needs to get a move on now. I could be sleeping still. She got back to bed. Oh, look, the defenders have started to nod off. Tinkor hasn't. I don't think you pacing up and down is going to speed her up. Look, she's still there. Oh, come on, Audrey, please. Amazingly, Tinkor's still got some gas left. No, it's no good. I need the loo. Oh. Wait a minute. She's moving. Dom, she's mi Dom, you're missing it. After all that time, she's up, onto the second axe, and she's over. Dom! Dom! Still there, is she? Oh, great. I was only gone for a minute. Well, Audrey's also gone because seven minutes and six seconds is not fast enough. Here's final attacker, Sherelle. Crazy monkeys! <laughs> well, that's woken everyone up. And Sherelle attacks the course like a crazy monkey. Incredible! Look at her go! I'm so glad you're here. I thought you were going to miss the party. <laughs> Now, what just happened? Well, Crazy Monkey Sherelle tried to hurdle the mace, but it was having none of it. That means the mace has beaten all 12 attackers today. A new record! Here she is at the incline. And amazingly, Tinkor still has some vapour left. Ooh, hairy man mould! How about a little round of applause for Sherelle? Yes, put your feathers together. Well, who'd like to see that again? Cue the splats! Well, we call it splat a lot. Well, not only is she fine, she's true, and Kook's loving it. Can't stop me. Joining Sherelle in round two will be Julian, Benito, Taylor, Stefan, and Katrina. Well, that was one of the most challenging rounds we've ever had on splat a lot. But as always, it's whittled the attackers down to the six fastest. And they will be moving onto the stockade. Mm. This is the round that determines who will make it to the final. So one thing's for sure, it's going to get very splatty indeed. So, round two has a lot to live up to after round one, wouldn't you agree, Dom? <laughs> yes. The biggest star so far has been the course itself. The moat challenge really tested the attackers today. I think you'd agree. <laughs> what are you doing? Hi! <clears throat> Clear off! Uh, sorry, mate. I, uh, I thought it was you. You know, the, the height and the... Uh, <laughs> Tom, so 12 have become six. Here's a reminder of the attackers who've made it thus far. Fastest to slowest, we have Julian, Benito, Sherelle, Taylor, Stefan and Katrina. The attackers begin by crossing the barrel-infested hexagon. Then they leap onto the hexapods in order to grab the rungs they'll need to build their ladders. Once built, they can grab a flag and escape, but with only four flags, two attackers won't make it. And just to make things even harder, we have three new defenders. Blue Ninja Shaden, Blue Winja Thorn, and finally... Ah! The one and only scab. Splat! Splat! So the attackers are ready to go, all looking focused. And so too are the defenders. I'm going for the one on the blue ladder. Uh-oh, he means Sherelle. She's in the light green helmet. Taylor's in the pink. Benito's in dark green, Julian's in the light blue, Stefan's in red, and Katrina in purple. But I predict in less than a minute's time, they'll all be foam-coloured. And they're 
off. Straight onto the hexagon and over the barrels. Scan straight in with a goo grenade. Not so tough now, are you? Shaden goes for goo too. Katrina leaps but doesn't make a clean landing on the hexapod, so has to try again. Oh, it's getting tasty. Lots of jostling going on in the middle. Here's the foam I was talking about. Scab decides to add slime to the mix. And here's Julian with the first rung of the round. Taylor nails her landing on the pod, but just look at that foam fountain. She ignores it and claims her first rung. Katrina also has a rung. Stefan leaps onto the pod, but Julian flops into the foam. Well, to be accurate, it was a face-first foam-filled flop. How finicky. Rito Benito is now joining the foam fest, but he has his first rung. And Thorne seems very happy with his work. Sherelle now leaping like a crazy monkey. Doncaster! Scab uses the splat zooka to give Katrina a double back splat. And it's all getting very messy in the middle, which makes the attackers sitting targets for the defenders. Ah, that was, that was, that, <laughs> that was me. Good. Well, yes, Scab, with a little help from Shaden, and then Stefan, who knocks Katrina over on her bot-bot. But she won't mind because she and Julian now have another rung each. They leap together. Julian makes it to the barrel, but Katrina doesn't. Instead, she goes for a dunking in the foam. Lovely! And comes out looking like the abominable Splatman. Foam is really taking its toll now and slowing everyone down. Taylor still has the energy to leap, though, and just manages to hold on. Hey! Stab spotted Julian finishing his ladder and gives him a little slime. That's not a little, that's a bucketful. Well, the slime stick didn't bother Julian, so Scab just took it to the next level. Sherelle now with a rung and a foam overcoat. Splatty tatty tip top tom. Well, everything's getting slippy, so that means everything's getting splatty, too. Now, this looks promising. Yes, Julian has grabbed the first flag. And he makes his way to the ladders. Remember, Julian won the first round, so he looks like he'll be entering the final with a perfect record. But Taylor isn't too far behind. She has the second flag. This round is really arting up, as I'm sure Katrina will agree. And there are Taylor and Julian at the top. They are through, and oh, hugs all round, eh? Nothing wrong with a hug. See? Even Katrina's hugging the pod. Really hugging it. Come on, Katrina, let go. But Nito has another rung, so has Stefan. A great leap from Sherelle, but not a great landing. And all the while, the attackers are being pelted by the defenders. Four attackers out there, but only two flags remain. Someone needs to make a move. Maybe Katrina will. Oh! Just as she was about to throw the paintball back at the defenders, Scab takes aim and splats her. Never gizzy! Those flags are literally up for grabs. Shaden's making life hard for Sherelle. What's this? Katrina has recovered from the Scab splat. And... Yes, she's going for a flag. In fact, she grabs two. Greedy, Katrina. And she heads for the ladders. Meanwhile, here's Benito with his last rung. And here's Katrina at the top. She's the third attacker through, joining Taylor and Julian in the final. Benito now has the final flag and is heading to his ladder. Just a few more steps, Benito. Cheryl makes one last leap as Benito makes it through. And that's the end of the round. We say goodbye to Shirelle and Stefan. No reward for them. They have to find their own way out of the stockade. But there is a reward for this lot. Yes, there is. The final and the crown await our finalists, who are Julian, Katrina, Taylor and Benito. Oh, they've done well getting this far, but there is still one huge obstacle remaining. Well, to be honest, there are several huge obstacles remaining. They've got teeter-totters, slime sticks, slippery splats, even more splats, slippy slides and lots, lots more. <laughs> So, what have we learned today so far? Well, we discovered early on that we can sum up splat a lot in a single sound. Put it away! Mm. Plus, you don't know the difference between a benito and a burrito. I was blindfolded. Anyway, I meant, what have we learned about the attackers? Well, I'll lend you my stat hat, Ooh. and you can find out for yourself. Exciting. <laughs> Oi! Here we go. Uh, well, Julian is a red-hot favourite. He's won the moat challenge and the stockade. Taylor has a slight edge over Katrina, but both girls look strong. And that is Benito, who struggled a bit in the last round, but he still made it through to the final. Wowzers, that was amazing! Yes. Yes, so today's finalists are Julian, Katrina, Taylor and Benito. And here are their opponents. All six defenders, Kook, Belista, Thorn, Tinkor, Scab and Shaden. Here's the capture the crown round. The attackers start with a pole drop into the mud baths. Then it's a glide over the slippery slides towards the titanic teeter totters. They lead to the barrier of all barriers, which looks out over the leaping lily pad lake. Then it's up the water wall to the splat a lot crown. Benito's in green, Katrina's in purple. Julian wears light blue and Taylor wears pink. One, two, three, four. Da, 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 oh, yes, another terrifying battle cry from the defenders. There's a klaxon and they're off straight down into the mud baths. Kook and Scab ready to foam them down, but Julian and Taylor are just too quick for them. 
Benito and Katrina not so fast on the slippy slides, though. Oh, careful, Katrina. Julian is the first up on the teeter. Uh, is this a new tactic? Shaden! Oh, dear. Kook is adding to his collection of feathers and swapping fashion tips with Shaden and Belista. Is this really the right time? Well, they might be deliberately distracting the attackers. Look! Benito's taking the bait! Oh, fuddle down he goes! And Taylor's down, too! Julian, however, looks focused and heads for the barrier. He's nearly there, and... Sigmuth! Just as he's about to climb up, Belista splats him, which means Julian has to go back to the teaser. Time for Katrina to have a go. She sprints, and oh, mud puddler, she splats! Benito under attack from Tinkor now, and it doesn't make that teetering any easier. Yes, you certainly don't need Tinkor slime when you're teetering. Taylor on the near side, steadying herself. But no, down she goes. Well, that's had everything. A slip, boink, quack, and a splat. Marvellous. Benito is still under fire. And he's down again. Katrina attempts another sprint. She's down, but holds on. Now, can she make it to the barrier? The defenders have spotted her. She's doing well. She needs to put both feet on the barrier, though, before moving on. Taylor teeters and totters again. But Katrina just does enough to clear the barrier. The defenders will move up a gear now. Here comes the water wall, making waves for Katrina. Tinkor piles on the pressure now with the water cannon. Can the other attackers catch up? No. Taylor's down again. She can't master the teeter. Yes, the teeters have certainly been the undoing of many a fine attacker. Katrina is still way out in the lead. Which means she's getting lots of attention from the defenders. Here's Taylor again. Will it be the same result? Maybe not. She's held on this time. Julie hasn't. Taylor makes it to the barrier. She's up. And she's over. The girls are leaving the boys behind. Royston! So Katrina now has the defenders and Taylor to worry about. Julian has another go, and he's just about held on. He's up onto the barrier. Could this be a three-horse race? He's struggling, though. And he's down. Bad luck, Julian. So back to the front runners. Taylor finding it hard to get to grips with the lily pads. Katrina is ahead of her, and only a few leaps away from the water wall. Taylor is up there and starts making progress. Katrina now makes a move. It's turning into a game of chess. How is this like chess? I don't know. I'm just getting very excited. Look, Katrina's at the water wall. Has Taylor got anything left to give? She has. She leaps towards the platform. But Katrina is climbing. Surely it's too late for Taylor now. It is. Katrina's at the top. And she has the crown. She's the new queen and ruler of Splatlock. Yes, the winner takes it all. And to rub it in, Thorn vaporizes Benito back into the moat. Katrina is cock a hoop. Scab isn't. Wow! Where to begin? Katrina and Taylor really showed the boys how it should be done. But there can be only one queen, and Katrina has proved herself to be a worthy champion. OK, so I think we're all agreed there can be only one queen. Yes, but what if I were to say to you we had two splats of the day? I'd say, good, double the fun. Our first splat comes from Shirelle. Now that's a sound that sums up splat a lot. Incredible. And our second comes from Lucas, who wobbled and then splatted spectacularly. An amazing exhibition for both attackers, so they are our splatters of the day. Back to Katrina. You know, it seems like only 20 minutes ago we were introducing her in the Moat Challenge. That's because we were. But if you recall, she only just qualified in sixth place. She improved, though, becoming the third attacker to escape the stockade. And then she never looked back in the final, leading from start to finish. Well, that's all for today. We'll leave you with a flag-raising ceremony. And the sound that sums up Splatterlot. Bye. I'm the Queen of the Castle. You know you have that coming, don't you? <laughs> yes.